Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another 3D printing Gundam video and it kind of goes without saying that 3D printing is the future and to a degree the now of custom Gunpla. Not only does it mean you can print out pretty much whatever you want, you can mass produce it, but if you design something yourself, you can also share and sell it online, which is mad awesome cool. So today what I'm going to be using is actually quite interesting. This is the Anycubic Photon Ultra. So this might look like the Anycubic Mono that I did a video about quite a while ago and I was still really, really, really green when it comes to 3D printing, especially with resin, and not a whole lot has changed really. Expect to see a lot of mistakes. But yeah, the Ultra right here is a little different, if not a whole lot different. This is a DLP printer. So as to what that means, well, I might as well tell you while we get it unboxed. So personally, I am no expert when it comes to 3D printers. Actually, I'm a complete and utter rank amateur. So I'm just going to read out the document, or at least the important parts of the document, Anycubic sent on to me about this, because it sounds incredibly interesting. So partly this right here, the Anycubic Photon Ultra, is a world premiere. It's the world's first affordable, high-precision DLP 3D printer for consumers. DLP printers are superior to LCD-based 3D printers in printing small and narrow models, but have also been prohibitively expensive until now. So basically the gist from here on out is, this is the exclusive debut of Texas Instruments' latest DLP technology. There's little to no maintenance, extremely high resolution prints, and low power consumption. The Photon Ultra right here will be going live on Kickstarter, where it'll be $399 for the first 100 backers, $4.99 after that, and once it is fully released on Amazon, it'll be over $599. So blasting through the points about this, you get some high precision printing. So this printer is rated at 720p, but it is using DLP technology, which means you get better prints than a 2K, 4K monochrome LCD screen print. The DLP printers use a projector instead of an LCD screen. And what you end up with is a clearer print with purer colors and richer layers, resulting in more delicate texture and sharper corners of models. Longer durability, you don't have to swap out LCD screens like you would if you were using a LCD one a lot. Apparently the energy rating is less, so that is good for the world right now because we're all screwed. Whisper quiet printing, it is quite quiet. Smooth edges, apparently this has anti-aliasing, which I did not know about. I'm reading this now and I'm like, well, that would have helped with a lot of problems, but I... Next one. Speed-wise, it can be up to five times faster than an LCD printer. You can use a wide range of resin options because the Ultra has adjustable UV power. You've got better adhesion. This I can actually attest to. I never got one failed print with this, which means a lot. And yeah, if you're interested in one, I will throw the link down there in the description. Also remember when you're working with resin, this stuff is nasty, toxic, and stank. So make sure to wear your mask and your gloves for your protection. When it comes to Gunpla and 3D printing, my outright goal is to be actually able to print armor you can retrofit onto some available Gundam frames, master grade frames, etc. Or outright 3D print something from the ground up and maybe get a community going that actually shares those sort of things. Obviously, because Gundam is copyrighted, it is hard to find anything whatsoever. But I did find this amazing blog over on Note.com. It is completely in Japanese. It is by what I can see here is Gin no Sekai. And what he seems to be working on is a 1 100 scale Rick DJ Kai Gundam. Just look at this thing. This is phenomenal. It looks like he did up the entire 3D data himself printed it out and this looks phenomenal. Honestly, I am blown away. Nothing like this is available to actually buy, find, to print, so I just jumped onto CG Trader to see what I could get. So seeing as the goal of the game right here is to test what this printer can print, how much detail, I tried to get a very detailed model. So I went for this right here. This is a cool stylized Alex Gundam, the NT1, and this is by Blender Ding Dong. Great timing on my phone there. So as far as I can see, this right here is not designed with 3D printing in mind. This is more of like a character model for a game or something, I think or for using it in something more like that. So I thought it'd make a great test for seeing just what the Photon Ultra can do. But what I didn't realize is the limitations of what I can do. 
And I ended up with this right here, and I... Uh, this is just a case of me learning step by step by step of what not to do. This is an absolute scaffold mess. Actually, anything that could go wrong went wrong with this. Everything is screwed up, the layering is terrible, and that amount... Just trying to cut off all that scaffolding? No way. So from here on out, I just had to try and figure out what to do to sort everything out. So I'm gonna go with a little bit of my do's and don'ts of 3D printing with resin. Don't! Just start printing with the settings not changed in the slicer software. Because essentially I got this, the forbidden block of cheese. Yeah, that's a whole waste of resin right there. Yeah, right off the bat, the slicer software, which I'll mention is not 100% complete because this is coming out on Kickstarter, but it was set to a completely different printer. Not the Ultra. Do! Make sure it's set to the Ultra if you're using the Ultra. Don't! Use the automatic scaffolds. Ho ho ho! So the second thing I made was some handguns. So while looking around on CG Trader again, I found this guy called Olegushinok, I think. But yeah, this guy is some fantastic stuff. Once again, it seems like these are for using in video games, level design, etc. Because we've got a lot of walls, surfaces, little segments and greebles and bits and bobs for mecha, which are insane and look absolutely perfect for printing out and sticking onto your Gunpla. So I went with some pistols because I'm an absolute sap for Gundams with pistols. And uh, that didn't work out, mainly because of the scaffolds once again. So I just threw them into the slicer software, hit auto on the supports, and what happens is, whatever side the supports are attaching to, you will lose all the detail, they'll get blurred up, and even this just kind of looked a little flat and layered and pixelated, it just wasn't working out, so... I tried it again with some awesome rifles by the same guy, Olegushinok, over on CG Trader, and I thought maybe if I put it the other way around on its side, I'd end up with less scaffolding screw-ups and the supports wouldn't be screwing it up as much, and nope, I was wrong. Even worse here, just the detail is screwed, it's just not cool. So, the do is put your own scaffolds on. Be very, very smart with where you put them. Put them on broad, flat surfaces so it is easy to remove them and it's not screwing up any detail. If you stick the support into some detail, it will fill that detail. So be very, very smart about where you put it. Make sure that everything that is, I guess, like a bottom point of something, make sure to put a scaffold on that, but still don't obscure any detail. So by doing this, then, I printed out these handguns, and I'll also mention another don't. Don't use the default settings in the Slicer software. They're not great. Like, what we want from our models is perfect-looking models right out of that vat of magical summoning custard. We want to do as little work as possible once it's out, so in order to do that, make sure to turn up some of these settings and down other ones. I recommend dropping the thickness of the layers as low as you can possibly wait. And by possibly wait is, the more you make these small, the longer you have to wait for the print to finish. The other thing is make sure to make the raise time. Make that a little bit higher because that is what will separate layers like what you're seeing right here. The pulling of the platform against the screen will pull the layers apart. So by making that time a little bit longer, it pulls a little more gently. I didn't use the anti-aliasing, but I recommend doing that. And also, make sure to tilt your models in the slicer software too, because that means less pulling, less layer separation. And yeah, basically after tweaking all this stuff, uh, my next print took uh, 60 hours. I'm still waiting with like 50 of those hours left, so those won't be in this video. But these right here will be. So these are not perfect by any means. I've got a couple of screw-ups on these because I didn't put the uh, supports in places they needed support, but they still came out good enough. I also tried to cut off this little busted barrel section on this gun, and uh, now it's gone, gone forever. It kind of broke. So working with resin can be pretty difficult if you're not used to it. It is very fragile, almost glass-like, so if you do snip it wrong, crack, break, it's broken. Also compared to the plastic that I was working on with the Gunpla masks, this is easy to work with. Just use some nice sandpaper, some fine sandpaper, and you can get some very nice surfaces very easily. And finally, just to get these looking a little bit better, I decided to paint them up. If you're curious as to the paints that I used, I used the black I always use as a primer, that is Citadel Colors Chaos Black, the best black I have ever used. 
and some of Tamiya's base white. I use that for the white on the gun because I'm trying to basically do the colors on the guns that are in the little CG images right here. These. After that, I did a bit of a lazy mask for the secondary color, which was IJN Grey, I believe. And as I'm voicing this over right now, they're not finished just yet. So I will throw some footage at the end of this video as to how they turned out. As of right now, I'm very, very happy with them. And again, this printer seems really damn good, but my own personal expertise when it comes to 3D printers is very, very basic. I'm sure in the hands of someone who knew exactly what they were doing, this could kick some extreme custom Gumpla arse. So anyway, that right there is it for the video. And if you are interested in getting your own DLP resin printer, well, this will be going live on Kickstarter on September 15th. Once again, I will mention, and I'm not sure if I mentioned this in the last resin printing video, I do live in a tiny apartment, so that does make resin printing very difficult, and that might go for you too. You really do need a dedicated area when it comes to resin printing. It is toxic, it is smelly, it is nasty, and it tends to get everywhere. Cleaning it up requires alcohol, and that's smelly and flammable too, so just keep that in mind. If you got the space, that's awesome, but if you don't, it can be a bit of a pain in the balls. But anyway, that is it for the video. Thank you so, so much for watching. Make sure to come back for more videos, and I'll see you next time. As usual, this video right here would not have been possible without each and every single one of you guys. So thank you so much for watching, and a special shout out to those of you who support the channel on the memberships, as well as over on Patreon, including Bakito Official, Caleb Engelhart, Global Frequency Studios, Joseph Kuklock, Lauren Seahack, Mr. Winter, Sean T, Tyler Sanders, Van Fawn, and Craig Jerry.